So today we have a washing machine that does not want to drain. I want to show you a few simple steps that you can take to get this machine working again and get the water drained out of this hunk of junk. So let's first go ahead and get this machine emptied and then we're going to go over a few possible things that could cause this machine not to drain. It should be pretty simple. There's a few different steps you want to take so you can find out what's wrong. So let's go ahead and begin. The first thing you want to do is make sure that the water has drained from the washing machine in case your pump doesn't work. One strategy is to take the drain hose from the washer and put it in a bucket below the washing machine's level. If the hose is low enough in the bucket, all the water is going to drain. You may have to use a more shallow bucket than what I have here though, because the lower to the floor the hose is, the better it's going to drain from the tub and even below the tub and the pump housing. Now if your washing machine has a locked lid for some reason and you can't get to the unit to inspect the drum, here's how you're going to open up the lid to unlock it. There are three screws that you want to remove on this washing machine with your hex head quarter inch screwdriver. This one screw once removed allows you to take off the metal cover plate which is very important. The top of the washing machine is locked in place with a hidden metal bracket. To open the lid up you need to pull the lid towards the front of the washing machine then pull up then push the lid towards the back of the washing machine and this will allow you to lift the lid up. When you tilt the lid to the back Remember that the lid is not locked to the top of the washer, so it can fall backwards and smack the console, which is a really bad thing. When pivoting the washer top, there are two small metal tabs that slot into the lid. These tabs are where the screws were that we removed earlier on the washing machine on the back. You may have to move the washer top around slightly for these tabs to thread into the lid where the slots are. Once done, you can rest this washer lid on a wall or other flat surface. Another way to drain the water from this washing machine is if the lid could open to use a wet dry shop vac and pull all the water out as needed. Though depending on the situation, let's start going over some possibilities on why this washer may not have drained the water out properly. The first thing to look at is your drain hose. Is it stuck deep down inside the standpipe which could cause a back flowing issue? Are there any kinks or obstructions that you can see that would prevent the washing machine and the water from draining properly. Next, when you got the water out of the washing machine and the drum was empty, did you notice if there was any suds remaining? If you do have a ton of suds in your washing machine drum, it could prevent the water from draining outright and this is a known issue with many washing machines. You can purge the suds with a teaspoon of cooking oil in the next cycle or running a wash cycle with no clothes using one cap full of fabric softener in the place of detergent or you could also use a cup of vinegar, again running a clean cycle with no clothes. If the suds persists though, consider changing the type of detergent you use to a more high efficiency washing machine friendly version. Some older styles of detergent tend to not be high efficiency friendly. At this point, it's probably a good idea to unplug the washing machine before we go underneath it. When we go underneath the washing machine, you want to tilt the washing machine backwards or to slide it until the bottom is fully accessible for you to deal with it. You want to be careful with the drain hose because if it's lower than the washing machine, the water will drain from the washing machine out onto your floor. So be very careful with that. I'm sitting this washing machine on a cardboard box and then I'm going to also suspend the drain hose above the washing machine in the background so it doesn't drain. Underneath the washing machine, the pump is to the right side. Note that your drain pump could be extremely hot as it could have been running for 15, 20, or 25 minutes. This would result it in being a danger to touch and you may need to wait for it to cool down. To remove the pump, first you'll need to take a pair of slip jawed pliers and remove the hose clamp that is on the pump. This hose is usually well secured to the pump housing, so to remove it, you'll need to twist the hose as you're pulling it off. Now I had difficulty doing this with this specific pump, so I'm going to save that for later. Note though, if you pull the hose off first, be prepared for water to drain out as soon as you remove it. However, I drain the water from this washer pretty well, so there's very little to deal with under this unit. Next, you can remove the wires from the wire harness, and they may be covered by a housing protector that will pivot off the drain pump housing. Once you have the wire harness removed, you can then remove the screws from the drain pump that hold it on. On this Whirlpool washer, there are 5 16 screws and once you start removing them, water could start dripping from the washer tub or hoses. Once the pump was removed, I still had the drain hose attached, so I simply twisted the hose off to fully remove the pump from the washing machine. 
With the drain pump off, make sure to inspect the inlet area and the outlet hose that the pump was just connected to for obstructions. I've definitely seen a few situations where the inlet was obstructed with bobby pins, toothpicks, or other debris, or the outlet was clogged with other types of debris. To check the outlet hose, you can use a snake or just run water through it to see if it flows through without any obstructions, but it's likely you may have already done this inadvertently when draining the washer via the drain hose earlier in the video. Make sure to check the drain pump housing for obstructions or blockage as well, as any of these locations could prevent water from draining easily or properly, causing the source of your problem and removing the clog would remedy your situation. With the drain pump off, we can either just replace it with another same exact model pump, or we could use a universal pump like what I'm going to do here. Due to cost and manufacturers being out of stock, I almost exclusively use a high quality universal drain pump, and I'm going to have a link to it in the description. Now to test and replace the pump, what I'm going to do is take a Phillips head screwdriver, or in this case an electric drill, and remove the five screws that keep the plastic housing on the drain pump itself. Once I have the drain pump housing off, I like to test the plastic paddles by spinning them. If it's in good working order, this pump should have significant resistance to spinning in about two or three areas on the paddle. And when you press through it, the paddle's magnet should snap back into place. A damaged paddle system is going to usually have little or no resistance and it's going to simply flop around or the paddles could in fact come out of the pump housing. Additionally, if you test this style washer pump, with a multimeter, you should get between 14 and 25 ohms of resistance. To reassemble the washer pump to the washer pump housing, all you have to do is reattach the five screws using the screw gun that I have here, and it's very simple to do. Make sure that you mount it back on the washer pump exactly the same, otherwise the hose may not reach. Another nice thing about these universal wash pumps is that they do have different harnesses that you can use to attach the power cables that go to the unit, making it really easy to use this in a lot of different brands, even beyond a Whirlpool or Maytag washer like a Samsung or an LG. And again, if you need something like this, I do have the link in the description. Now going back to the washing machine, let's go ahead and reassemble the new drain pump. I'm going to put the hose on without the clamp first. Then I'm going to secure the pump back to the washing machine tub via the three 5 16 screws. Now once I have those three 5 16 screws installed, I'm going to put the wire harness back to place and then lock the cover onto the pump. And now we're all done with what should be a fixed washing machine. The only other major thing that could potentially be an issue with this washer after we've tested everything would be the control board not sending or the drain pump receiving 120 volts to the drain pump. You could use a multimeter to test for the 120 volts going to the drain pump at the control board. Now to figure out exactly which pins it is, you need to make sure to find the tech manual hidden in the washer, and if you watch this next video on the screen, I'll show you how to do that right at the start. I hope this video helped troubleshoot your Whirlpool washing machine, and I hope you have a great day.